Welcome back to the Scoreboard USFL Week 2. This show is for the USFL only. If you're here for the XFL, that is a separate show, which you can also find on this channel. Uh, but this video in particular, we're talking about the USFL Week 2. The XFL, of course, is in Week 10, coming up to the playoffs pretty soon, so it's clutch time over there. USFL is just getting started, and we had what I would consider to be a very promising Week 1 in terms of quality. But Smokey, how are you doing and what do you think? Oh, I'm doing good. I am better than Houston Gamblers fans right now. They are absolutely the Orlando <laughs> Guardians of this league. There is no doubt Already. about it. Already. After yes. one after one week we're going we're really going that far. <laughs> Poor Kenji Bar, you are stuck on the worst team in the league. I mean it's bleeding over from last season, right? I mean a lot of people would say the Maulers the Maulers look promising. I mean that they didn't win. They looked better than they did last season, in my opinion. The gamblers were just bad. Absolutely overall bad. I, I think that is your guardians of this league this season. Wow. And they were that pretty much or close to that last season. Oh, Not they were quite close. on the bottom, but they were still bad. Mm hmm Absolutely. How was our how's our record for after week one? Oh, absolutely perfect. We agreed on every single game and got every single game right. That is the advantage of having this league played out last season. We pretty yes. much knew what would happen here, and that is exactly how it played out. I didn't know that it would happen for the pits for the Michigan Panthers though. What do you mean? That I did not. I didn't think they were gonna. They, I. I mean, I picked them, but yeah. I didn't think they would be good. Good, like. I mean, they look great. Oh yeah, they do. Josh Love. I looks thought. Great. Yeah. I thought it would be a, like a week one, actual week one tank bowl with the Gamblers. Oh wow. But yeah. the Panthers actually look good, so there could be a, a first like sign of a turnaround there. But they started improving last season before the end of the season, so I think it was all in the cards. You know, Josh Love gets another season to improve here, and they've got Carson Strong coming in the game here and there. So <laughs> they do, yeah. yeah, and they they both look pretty good when they got their yeah. chance. I mean, Josh Love played the near perfect, like near flawless game, and Carson Strong looked very good when he came in. Yeah, I think he yeah, was this pretty might much be a good team. He was pretty much perfect, also. Yeah, this might be a good team. This might actually be like competitive level team. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm curious to see what uh, how that goes and what happens there because this week might already be uh, might be a bit more of a challenge. But uh, we'll start off with the Gamblers at the Breakers. Hmm. Yeah, um, Kenji Bahar, like I said, I'm sorry, but your team is really bad. <laughs> Looking for any standout. There's no standouts as far as wide receivers. Uh, Curtis Johnson, yeah, you put together a horrible team. <laughs> TJ Pleasure at running back, there's your standout. That's, that's about it. There's nothing good. I mean, over on the breakers, though, they're not as good as I thought they were. It's not quite the Kyle Sloter breakers of last year, but... Mm, they they have a decent replacement in McClode Bethel Thompson. Like this guy, maybe probably better than Sloter because we saw what Sloter did when he ended up in the XFL. Maybe it was the team all along. You know, maybe it was John D. Filippo just putting together a great team, and Sloter was just some piece that could be replaced by anyone anthony jones at running back jonathan adams and johnny dixon i love johnny dixon sage surratt was the number one receiving option on this team at tight end i love this league because they use tight ends unlike the xfl there is only two prominent tight ends and they get used a decent amount but only two teams actually use tight ends whereas we'll see more of that here in the usfl I will be picking the breakers at home because the gamblers are just that bad. Uh, yeah, I agree. I'm, I'm done picking. Uh, even carrying over from last year, I'm done picking the Houston <laughs> gamblers because it cost me so many points. And I want to keep this record up straight and good. So take New Orleans as well. I think uh, Bethel Thompson. He struggled a little bit, and that was, of course, first time with a new team, which is uh, understandable. 
um, but I think his curve improvement is going to look pretty good across these 10 weeks because he's such the veteran presence and he really understands it and the game probably is very slow in his head because he's been in the NFL. Um, he's played so many years throughout different leagues, so there's nothing that he hasn't seen. It's nothing that he's learning on the job anymore. Like a lot of these quarterbacks in these leagues are very young and sort of at the beginning of their career and trying to take that step into the NFL, which at the quarterback position is purely a mental step it's not about physical abilities it's purely just what happens between the ears and as a veteran who spent 15 years on that kind of level um that is not a challenge anymore so i think he's going to be like a big factor of stability uh, for that team as well and in games like this where it comes to just playing consistently and you you know you're have probably the more talented roster and you just make no back-breaking mistakes that's the kind of quarterback you want so Breakers win at home against the Gamblers, who already, as you mentioned, look pretty bad. Mm -hmm. We have the Showboats at the Stallions. <clears throat> this is going to be an interesting game. This should be really good because the Showboats, although they lost, they, they lost to the best team in the league in a really good game, in my opinion. Uh, this was this was great. 23-27 uh, to 27, uh, playing... The runner-up last year, which I believe is the best team in the league right now, over the Stallions, but they will be okay. playing. They will be playing the Stallions here. Uh, Brady White looks great. Alex Collins, we knew he was great before he entered this league. Uh, not a lot of receiving options. I don't know if this is just Todd Haley's game plan, but the the receivers out there are the running backs. Uh, and I guess I don't know if it's Brady White or Todd Haley. I don't remember him using schemes like that when he was uh with the browns you know in uh, various places but that that seems to be it no no real wide receivers to speak of getting any decent production it's going to be alex collins and the alex collins show on the other side the stallions are still good still good alex magoo had to come back in here because jamar smith was injured and i forgot but then i remembered by watching this game Alex Magoo is a mobile quarterback. <laughs> I, I I didn't I didn't realize that last year, and I know after watching this, I was like, oh yeah, we talked about that last year, that he would come in for Jamar Smith and actually be a mobile quarterback. He could run the same type of offense. Uh, C.J. Marable, oh man, what happened here? Uh, what what happened with Bo Scarborough? I had just said that he's probably going to be the MVP of this league. He got two carries for negative one yards what is going on cj marable was the number one running back and magoo was the second one as a matter of fact um either way that like skip holtz has a really good team here oh and the tight end i, I gotta mention winners are a great tight end jay sternberger former uh a packer uh one of um uh, aaron Rodgers' favorite targets during that season is here and that's probably gonna be your number one receiver throughout the season Either way, it's enough waffling. I'm picking the Stallions at home. Okay, let me first, before I get into my pick, of course, let me give credit where it's due. I'm very, I, I think that this Memphis team is very, very promising. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm glad to see that because it's certainly more promising than the team they replaced last year, which, say, for, the, for their quarterback who kept them above water was terrible. Tamu. But, yep. But uh, the show was look great. Considering they played the Stars with a huge upset to win, and there's a lot of things to like you mentioned already, quarterback, we didn't really know that that much about. Kind of enigmatic, but they've played well, performed. Of course, Alex Collins is a big name, and I think the offense will rely heavily on, on him as well. Uh, but it's a very well-rounded team, and if you watch the game, you know that this defense can be like swarming i know they allowed a lot of points but case cook has got sacked five times during that game mm -hmm. so they can come after the quarterback which is not something that i really love to see of course this week um but all that being said i think the show will have a good season they got a winning record by the time it's said and done did you know that the m in magoo stands for mvp <laughs> is that the route we're going here and that the C stands for clutch. See? <laughs> See, he came in, second half, he took over the game. Played perfectly. Rushing, touchdown, pass. He came in, throw a bomb. First thing he does. So, uh, 
this was actually, if you remember this, he was, I think, the second overall pick, first or second overall pick in the inaugural draft last mm-hmm. year. Uh, and I said, this is my MVP w- ahead of time before. I said, this is a wonderful quarterback for like a minor league like this. He's going to be the MVP. Um, he got hurt or both of them actually dealt with some injuries. And then Jamar Smith came in and he turns out to be to also be great. And suddenly we have two of the top five quarterbacks on one team. And uh, that is something that's, of course, a big luxury to have and keeping both of them going into next year even more so because neither one of them went to the NFL for whatever reason. I don't really understand why. But um, I'm assuming Alex Magoo gets to start this week. But honestly, I don't care that much. I have the luxury of not having to worry about who my quarterback is going into the game because I know both of them are going to be elite. So... Whoever it is, I'm going to think, I'm, I'm thinking Magoo is going to be the starter. Um, he's just, I can just rely on him to win. So, Stallions keep winning against the Showboats at home and picking up where they left off last year. Which, by the way, what makes you think the Stars are the best team in the league? By oh. what metric are you going? Is this because Case Cookers was the best quarterback this last weekend? Yeah, absolutely. I they... They were as good as they were last season, no doubt about it. Like you said, that was a swarming defense, but they were able to put up that many points on them. Case Cookus looks great. Yes, he was getting sacked. He has a mobile quarterback, probably the most mobile in this entire league. We'll, we'll more on that later, but the Stallions just were not as impressive as they were last year. It really bothered me that Scarborough had two carries for negative one yards i know cj marable is still capable but without that major running offense in scarborough i don't think this team is quite as good now that's I, how good they are they're they're so good that both scarborough is your third string running back what do you want me to do <laughs> maybe so maybe he lost the stuff over the the winter or the summer or whatever it was <laughs> maybe he lost something but uh, we'll see. I do like Jay Sternberger being there this year, though. I think that's going to be great. I mean, it's Skip Holtz. He, I'm sure he'll get a ton of wins. I just don't think he's quite as good as the Stars this season. Okay. Well, they're probably going to meet so sooner sooner rather than later. Yeah, absolutely. So, we'll we'll soon, see about that. It definitely is going to be a good... Uh, maybe another championship game. Who knows? But for now, I don't see why we can pick not anyone but the Stallions to be the number one team in power rankings here. Mm-hmm. I mean, um, they seem to be invincible. Whatever quarterback, a lot of ton of talent, and defensively, I mean, they're turning the they're forcing turnovers to playing great special teams. Uh, this is the New England Patriots of the USFL, and the dynasty is on because they're <laughs> they're going back to back. But maybe that, it's a bit is, early. Is that how it works though? Like as long as the guy has an Irish Mick name, the, the, he's going to be the MVP, obviously, right? Yeah, because the M stands for MVP and the C stands for yeah. That's how, oh, okay. that's how it works. Okay. Uh, yeah, I didn't realize that until and, now, <laughs> but now I see the pattern here. <laughs> that's all you need. That's that's it, if you haven't noticed. That's how I pick my teams. That's why I always <laughs> yeah. pick the win. That's why I pick the good teams ahead of before the season even starts. <laughs> Whoever has a Mick on the the roster, yes, that, that's the exactly. Team. That yeah. has to be a good quarterback. Oh, but yeah. it's gonna be. This is gonna be a great game. I mean, style, showboats are gonna be fantastic. I think to have they'll have a very good season. Mm-hmm. Generals at the Maulers. Yeah, both of these teams don't look good in my opinion. The Generals were great last season, but not so much so far this season. Both these teams have a 0-1 record at this point. Dakota Pro Cup coming in over DeAndre Johnson during, I guess it was an injury. I actually missed that portion of the show. I just know that I saw this guy out there and I was like, who the hell is Dakota Pro Cup? Uh, But it is what it is. They, They weren't extremely horrible, but they... It is what it is. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't think they're as good as last year. Darius Victor still looked okay. Um, Cameron Eccles looked pretty good. That's about all I can say for the Generals. They're kind of blah, but so are the Maulers. The Maulers are definitely not the worst in the league, in my opinion, but they are in the bottom three. Uh, James Morgan and Troy Williams uh, splitting the, the 
quarterback situation there. Uh, same thing with the running backs, Madre London and Garrett Groshek. They were splitting last season. They do have a tight end who will be the number one receiving option on this team. And Artavius Lynn, I do like that. Ray Horton, good job there. That's about the only thing I can say that you did right. I'm going to go with who was the best team last year because these teams are both really blah right now. I will pick the generals on the road. Uh, yeah, I'll agree with you on that because there's one thing, like one light at the end of the tunnel that I saw, at least for the generals, is the running game, right? They're still getting it done on the ground. There's Victor. Um, if there's quarterback struggles, they can still hand the ball off 30 times and mm -hmm. be have a respect put a respectable game together of course you run into probably the best defense in the league in the in the stallions and it makes it hard to score points are hard to come by but um they still convinced me more than the maulers did even though they both lost but the maulers lost to a uh, objectively worse team and man the maulers offensively it was it was rough it was rough to watch. And if, if that's the only game you saw last weekend, you think the USFL is doomed because you turn <laughs> yeah. into the, the Maulers and Breakers mm. in Birmingham in front of like 2,000 people, maybe at most. And it is bad. I mean, quality wise, it's terrible. It's D2 college level. That's what it looked like at the start. Just rotating quarterbacks back and forth, fumbles, picks. No, it was, it was, it was not looking good. Um, all sorts everything was wrong with that game actually i turned off at halftime i actually did, didn't even finish it um, <laughs> because it, it really the quality was that bad and that brings me to one point that i want to highlight just um just after we get them we put these picks but i think that the quality difference between the best teams and the worst teams in the usfl is enormous um, mm -hmm. Much more so than in the XFL. I don't know why that is, but after the first um, the first week, I had that impression. I'm taking the generals here as well. I think they'll get it done on the ground. The the, the Maulers, man, I don't think the color change helped. I I don't think it helped. Didn't seem like didn't seem like do anything. And last but not least, the Panthers at your Philadelphia Stars. Yeah. This is going to be interesting right here because the Panthers does look like the most improved team from last season. That quarterback combo of Jordan Love and Carson Strong, I think is going to be pretty deadly this season. They're going to do a lot of great things. I just don't think you can do it against my stars right here because this is, if I haven't told you yet, this is the number one team in the league. They are the best in this right. league right now. All right, all right. <laughs> I, I do like... Second. <laughs> I do like the running back combination of uh, Reggie Corbin and Stevie Scott. Those guys are great there. I, I really like this team. I love Trey Quinn, as I told you last week. This guy's really good. Him and Joe Walker and Ishmael Hyman. Like, these guys are going to be great. Like, uh, I, I kind of want to get behind this team, but I can't. <laughs> um, because it's the stars right here. I'm, I'm going to pick them in other weeks other than this but right now i'm going with that all-star lineup of case cookus matt colburn Corey coleman the c's are out there and they are going to kill it going with the stars at home i hope you're ready for an early season reality check no, no we can't do it <laughs> i'm taking the michigan panthers here's why i think the stars and I, i'm not i'm not trying to to doom to spell doom for you this early in the season right you, you got the win you went they, they were in the final the championship last year and i'm not taking that away from you but here's the thing huh. i think the stars worst case scenario but still realistic is they are going they might be this year's generals this might be a one-man show, uh, resting too much on the laurels of their quarterback. Because who is running this whole offense, uh, both through the air and on the ground? Because he's a yeah. leading rusher as well. Yeah. Um, if not, I mean, what is the defense doing other than that? Like, not a whole lot. I mean, he gave up 23 points. Not, not a whole lot of impact plays. Yeah, he won because... Case Cookers was good enough to just elevate you over the showboats by a score. But, man, that's not... I don't think that's good enough. I I don't think that works. We saw that with the Generals um, last year, and we thought, oh, it's Tavo. He's got... No, not the Generals, sorry. The, um, the, what are they called? The Vipers, right? Tampa Bay Vipers? Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, the type of vipers. Uh, uh, or bandits? Even what, worse. No, the bandits. The bandits is yeah, what they the were. Yeah, the Tampa Bay bandits. The Tampa Bay bandits. Yeah. Sorry, not the vipers. <laughs> in the, the vipers um, XFL. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In the, uh, in the USFL last year. Uh, yeah. It was Tamu and it was nothing else. And they ended up like around 500 because it wasn't enough. Now, I'm not saying that's going to happen to the stars, but it could happen to the stars. And it looks like a whole lot is hinging on Cage Kripkas here. And yes, that is usually how you get an MVP if it works out. Mm -hmm. But if it doesn't and you end up losing too many games because just the Stallions are better at every position or a team like the Panthers actually can match you and maybe outduel you in certain certain aspects, that is a um, that's a fine line. So I'm gonna say early season reality check for the stars. Mm -hmm. As the Panthers, laughing stock of last year, come back with either Judge Love or Carson Strong are both look good. Mm -hmm. And in my opinion, just more receiving and defensive talent, and they upset the uh, division winners of last year, the Stars. So, I know it's... I, I, in Philly, too, I know this is a bit of an upset pick, but here's the thing. I'll say this. Vegas is cautious about this one, too. Stars, at home, three points. Mm. Books are saying, on a neutral field, flip a coin. They After are just one week. underestimating Mr. USFL here. <laughs> Wait, no, no, you can't call him that. <laughs> Why not? You can't call. He hasn't even won an MVP yet. He wasn't he MVP will? last year. Listen, it's, it's, like you it? just laid out the case for him, and this is the one-man show, is what you said. But he's got to win. He has to yeah. win more games than oh, not, and make to. The probably go back to the championship. It, okay, this is the Stars' <laughs> year right here. Right, and he will be the MVP. As long as he can stay healthy, you know, we don't have Brian Scott waiting behind there. He's actually playing for the Argonauts or something now. So, uh, unfortunately, we need Case Cookus to stay healthy. But this guy is that explosive. He's that good. He's that mobile. He is Mr. USFL. And Corey Coleman really helps this team also. He has one extremely accomplished receiving threat out there so uh, his past game is going to be great i mean look at let me bring up his stats right here um 20 for 29 69 percent of a percentage man that's great like he's he's playing he's playing extremely accurate not to mention uh a seven running attempt for 31 yards uh, three touchdowns through the air man case cook is right now is the best quarterback in this league regardless of what any of the the Irish mix can do in any of these leagues. Case Cook is is Mister USFL. Okay, you so you're proclaiming that after one week. Yes, absolutely. Well, one season, one year, and one week. Okay. Yeah. If they would have, yeah, won, I'm not buying it. I'm not if, buying if it. If they would have won the championship last year, everybody would be dead set that that's who Case Cook is. is. But he didn't get to play the whole season last year. I get it. This right here is Case Cook's season. Okay. I'll say, I'm going to just say the Stallions are favored over Memphis by more points than the Stars just beat them by. Mm hmm. Well, I can't. I hope the Stallions and the Stars are both undefeated when they have to play. And I'm going to bring up the schedule because I think it's pretty soon. I think we are playing pretty soon, right? Uh. Week three is the Panthers. Week four is the Gamblers. Okay, maybe it's week not as soon eight. as like week, week eight. Week eight at Birmingham. All right. So that's well. late. Both going eight and eight and zero oh into that one would be phenomenal because that would be the big preview of the championship yes. game again. If that happened, and yes. if they could both, I mean, if they could both establish dynasties, that would be great. Uh, I'm more confident in the Stallions because they're better at more positions. Or they're good at more positions than the stars are, but I mean, yeah, a good quarterback can go a long way. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know what? No, 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 we'll 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 be here a week from now, and the Panthers might might have just won that game, and and suddenly you're wondering, oh, can we even win <laughs> our division? Well, see, Jamar Smith is your case, Cookus, on the Stallions. Alex Magoo was Brian Scott for the Stars, obviously. But we don't have him anymore. Vadley is not as good. So, yes, you do have a point that if Case Cook goes out, the Stars are in trouble. But as long as he's playing, I would expect to see two 8-0 teams playing that week. Or at least 7-0. Yeah. 
That's that, a, that, a, that is a big ask. That is a big ask. But we'll see. Uh -huh. We'll see. I'll, I'll, I'll take it for sure. But I got the, got the Panthers. So do we agree on all but one this week? Yes, we do. Just the Panthers and the Stars. You Just think the those Panthers lousy stars. Panthers are going to put one over on my Stars? They look Not, pretty good. <laughs> they they, they pretty do. Good. Uh, they do. Panthers I want. I want to cheer for them. I want. I want to get behind the Panthers, but I can't right here. It's not going to happen. Remember that the Panthers were the preseason favorites to win the league last year. Mm -hmm. They came in with the first oh, overall pick, yeah. great Shea Patterson out Shea of Michigan. Yeah. 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 Harbaugh product, and it didn't really <laughs> work out. <laughs> not and they at were all. Kind of bad, but this this yeah. season might be different. This yeah, might well, be when they picked up Jordan Love halfway through the season, like they, they decided he's good enough to keep it. I think he's getting better. I like, uh, I like the Panthers. Like I said, I've got them number three in my power rankings right now. You got them three. After oh, okay. Week. Let's do an Im improv power ranking then. Uh, let right. me let me see. Okay, put the put the Gamblers probably in eighth yes. and the Maulers in seventh. Yes. Like just however you like it. Um, could kind of change them around. Generals will be <laughs> yes. six, then the Breakers at four, yes. Showboats, uh, Showboats at no, Breakers at five, Showboats at four, mm -hmm. um, Panthers three, Stars two, and obviously the Stallions one is what I'm I going. mean. Obviously, the Stars are number Just, one, and the Stallions oh, are number two. Why would they be? <laughs> I don't see it, I don't see it, but next maybe next week we'll have more clarity, I guess. Yeah. If they can convincingly beat the Panthers, the Stars have an argument. Yeah, well, they're both in the same position right here. The Showboats are probably better than anyone thought they were going to be in. So were the Panthers. So th this may be an interesting week right here. For the four best teams in the top two matchups. Yeah, yeah, there you go. That, and then the bottom true. feeders are facing each other. <laughs> the tank bowls are ready for you. <laughs> Maybe it's too early. Maybe we're judging too early. But I have the yeah. impression. I don't know if you felt this as well. I really have the impression more, much more so than the XFL. The quality in the top games is very strong, and in the bad games is very bad. Like um, mm -hmm. if I'm looking at the the Stars Showboats game or even the Stallions Generals, the like the like the very best I'm seeing there looks to me looks better than the XFL by quite a bit. But if if I'm looking at the breakers and and uh, the maulers, I mean, I told I, I turned off at halftime. It was really that bad. Yes, it was. Everything it was about it was terrible. And uh, um, there's a polarity there with um, the stadiums, right? Now, of course, they've expanded from one to four stadiums, which is good, but it's not as good as eight. Uh, and you really notice this: the Stallions play at home. Birmingham Stadium is full. The breakers blame play in Birmingham. No one shows up. Because mm -hmm. there's not there's not a home fan base there, and I think that's going to be an issue in most of the stadiums, is that effectively you're cultivating. Whereas last year you cultivated one fan base, which was Birmingham. Now maybe you're building four, but you're probably not building eight full fan bases still, which could be an issue. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, maybe by next season we'll have a, a stadium in every hometown, and people starting to, to or. If, teams starting to build their own fan bases and packing out these stadiums like the XFL is doing with the exception of Vegas of course I feel like that'll be very important I yeah. feel like it'll be very important to have eight teams eight stadiums eight fan bases yes. spread around throughout the the whole country um, yeah. hopefully they're on the right track on that it seems like the general public is more interested in the usfl right now than the xfl which i do get because they are in season two right here so you have a little more confidence that the the league is going to hang around you know not close down like like uh, all the other spring leagues have done and the USFL has done it twice already, so there's probably that fear, like, why am I going to invest my time in something that's just going to shut down at the end of one season, or not even make it through a whole season. But I think at this point, we can confidently say that the XFL will make it to the end of the season and go into season two. And I think both of these leagues will be doing much better from this point forward. I 100% agree with that. Yeah, it's good to have... Like two is better than one. 
uh, mm-hmm. just because it makes both of them better, 100%. And better at some point, they will combine with each other. One side will decide, I'm going to sell out, and they will combine, and we'll have a giant spring league. And it's basically a full minor league system. Absolutely. Uh, at, one point, cause <laughs> yeah. at that point, they're competing They're competing with college football, which we, as we've established mm-hmm. before, is going more and more into like a minor professional league system anyway with the with now players getting paid and transfer portal there's yes. not much of a difference anymore between like like a, like a, a 21 year old like junior could be thinking i mean maybe not quite ready for the nfl do i play another year in college or do i go to the usfl like this is a pretty similar pretty similar points uh, at some point it, oh, it gets yeah. there and then they might play in the usfl because it doesn't overlap with the nfl Oh, yeah, absolutely. And if you're coming out of college and say you had an injury or something, some reason you're not going to go in the top five, six, seven rounds. Yeah. You could go here and improve your stock and then exactly. go back and earn a much bigger contract that way. If we're actually getting to see these waves of undrafted players from the NFL the week, the year after like flowing into these leagues, um, th- there's a lot of potential. For sure, because that that will raise the quality, and it's a win-win for everyone. NFL gets to see more talent actually playing in real games to scout, Mm -hmm. Uh, and these leagues get better players, and the players get better opportunities because they get to showcase what what they can do. Yeah, they can follow the practice squad. Cavante Turpin route. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of players are like bound to be like just purely by their draft position. They're kind of bound to be backups for the rest of their life. And yeah. uh, you take a, a year into the, into one of those smaller leagues, and you get to start, and then a whole lot of things come on tape that otherwise no one would have seen because you just don't get the snaps in NFL yeah. games. Absolutely, you're holding the clipboard. Mm-hmm. So that is that is that is all, all good all good development. Let's see how it goes. Week two, of course, very early for the USFL. XFL, I will mention it again, is going into week ten, and the playoffs are on the line in. Two of those, actually three of those games, uh, they're going to be very, very important um, because the division, well, division titles are settled, but the second spots in the division are not. We uh, still have two spots to fill. One is going to DC, one is going to Houston. So if you're interested in the XFL, you've been following that, go check out that separate show as well. But as for the USFL, Smoggy, do you have anything to add? I think that's it for this week. All right, drop us a like and your picks for this week. Power X as well, Stars or Stallions. Why is it obviously the Stallions? Let or us the know. Stars, yes. And uh, on the off chance that it could be the Stars, why would it be the Stars? <laughs> Let us know all about that in the comments as well, and we'll see you in the next one. Deuces.